I've got my skin good and stretched out after scraping it the last time, pushing the water out and stretching the neck like I showed you. Um, you can go in this with really strong tannins. I've got a little bit left over from um, some other hides. I'm going to use those up before I put it in the strong stuff. For the first little bit, work it around. This is probably going to soak up every bit of tannins that's in this bucket in short order. I just want to keep it moving around. Uh, one of the things about this suede is, is that it, um, it's going to balance out a lot easier than uh, the grain on. So it's not quite as crucial. Still want to get it pretty even. But over time that's going to, since it, everything can pass through both sides easier, um, it really does balance out pretty good. So what I'll do is go ahead and I'll run it through this bucket and I've got another partial, you know, partially used up bucket and then I'll throw it in some uh, heavier tannins. Same stuff as before, it's nothing really new, but I didn't want to skip a step and maybe somebody that didn't watch the other videos get lost in it. So let's do that and uh, we'll just see how long it takes for this to tan through. Sway doesn't take nearly as long, so... Um, another nice benefit of of uh, doing the suede. This is after maybe five minutes. You can see the color that it's taken on. And this is with weak tannins. You can see how you can see through the sunlight coming through the skin there. This one's not super, super thick, so it's not going to take long to do. Our um, suede is fully tanned now. It's been tanned for a while, but I just got busy and it's been sitting in the bark solution for a bit longer than it needed to, but it doesn't hurt anything. Now, earlier I mentioned about how clean these hides were, and we were looking at bubbles going through the skin and everything, but this this will show you just how clean these things are. Let me get a better spot here. Got to get enough air underneath them. Now everything in between the fibers is gone, except the tannins now, which have attached to the fibers. But you can see, I mean, there's just tiny bubbles. It doesn't matter where you choose to hide; it's it's going to bubble like that. It is so clean. And that's why we didn't worry about it quite as much early on. It probably would have sped the process a, sped the process a bit. And it, it may have possibly taken a little less bark. I don't know. Um, there is some suggestion that that could be the case. So the next step after the suede is fully tanned, I want to rinse out as much excess tannins as I can. And I do this pretty pretty well and pretty thorough on my spades because I want them as close to buckskin feel as I can get. Um, they will be a, a little more dense because of the tannins. And according to Matt Richards, the, um, the weight of these will be anywhere from 10 to 30% more than a skin without tannins. So I want these as light and fluffy as possible. So I'm, like I said, I do much more thorough rinse to get the tannins out so they don't continue to bond with the fibers. Well, I've kind of lost track of which hide I was showing in the video. I've got so many going right now, but um, this one's tanned all the way through. Did a cut and there's no white in the middle. It's pretty even colored. So this part here is what I do after the tannins. And that's one of the reasons that we don't have to get it quite so perfect on this side before the tannins is that we get this chance here to come back over the skin. And I guess this is really not totally necessary, but I really like to have a nice 
finished suede side and this um, this helps with that it makes both sides be really pretty and not have a lot of little dangly bits and the blade I'm using here just seems to be perfect for this it's one of the earlier ones that I made uh, it's nothing fancy it's a real thin planar blade and I've got this almost flat almost parallel with the beam I'm not really trying to shave it down or thin it or I'm just taking off that little bit of excess material that's been raised up this is a very easy part of the process it's something you can just kind of have fun at there's no real work to it and I'm also pushing out some of the tannins the excess tannins that are in here I did rinse this one time and wrung it out well I may rinse it one more time and then I'll decide whether or not I want to go over it again but this this part's just really simple really easy at, at this stage you can really just enjoy the fruits of your labor and, and take your time being with the skin here and appreciating all of the changes that have occurred all the work that's been done up to this point this is really really is meditative here I, I love seeing when the skins all the work starts coming together into um, the final product that comes from this I may go over it one more time and I may not this is cleaning up really nice and this this blade here does a, a great job of it just being thin and being able to get it so flat with the beam well, I'm gonna finish this up and then um, we'll dry this thing out and then put it in the emulsified oils and go to softening. Now that I've rinsed this again, I'm going to wring it out well and then allow it to dry, which is the way I get them ready for putting them in the um, emulsion. Plus, it's a, a way to store them until I'm ready to do that. These I don't think would be well suited to doing the donut style ringing like with buckskin. This um, skin is pretty tight and somewhat rigid right now. And I really feel like you probably could tear them if you were to put that kind of pressure on them. Plus with the tannins in this now, with this being tan, it rings pretty well. It grips and the water flows through it nicely. So I can get them dry enough doing it this way. Now, an easier way might be to, um, you know, wrap it over a pole and twist these two ends and wring it. But usually I just do this because I'm not in a hurry. I don't have to get them that dry. And they dry a lot quicker than buckskin. If you want them to lay a little flat or if you're not going to work them right away and you want to be able to roll them up until you can get to them, you might want to pull on it just a little bit here and there just so it'll lay flat enough to roll. But you don't have to, to work it or put a lot of effort into it. So after this is wrung, I'm just going to pull it open and maybe drape it over something and get it somewhat flat, but not, I won't get perfect at it. 